So Apple is finally releasing universal control. And if you don't know what that is, how did you get here? <laughs> okay, so high level how it works. Simply place your Mac or Macs and iPads beside each other and then move your Mac mouse to the edge of the screen. It should automatically pull the mouse onto the next device. The first time I set this up, it really was that easy. And if it doesn't work for you, here's the requirements for universal control. Number one, it must be signed into the same Apple ID. Number two, it must have Mac involvement, so you can't just do it iPad to iPad. Number three, it must be running Mac OS 12.3 or iPad OS 15.4. And lastly, all devices need to be connected to the same Wi-Fi network. Now, assuming you have all of this set up, your mouse should switch seamlessly from one device to the next and again to the next. Now, my thoughts and practical uses. So my original thought on this was, so what? <laughs> we already have Sidecar to turn our iPad into a second display. Do we really need this? And then my second thought was, this is gonna be really buggy. But that's what I was testing in prep for this video. A, is it practical or useful? And then B, is it buggy? And the short answer to part A is yes, it is practical for some people. So first off, the overall concept is controlling two computers at once with a single mouse or trackpad. So putting myself into that scenario, I do a lot of video editing, right? The most annoying part to me is time wasted waiting on my animations or my video to finish rendering and exporting, which is typically a time I have to just leave my computer alone and let it do its thing. But now what I can do is I can have my main computer exporting a video while I'm focusing on another animation or a thumbnail of a future video on the other computer. And this is all working as if they're on the same computer, by the way, just dragging my mouse over to the other side of the screen. And then likewise, once my thumbnail is done, I can drag it over to the other computer and then upload it to YouTube. And the same multitasking experience can be said for having a work computer and then attach it to a personal computer so you can seamlessly switch between the two. So overall, yes, this thing is useful. But now onto part B, is it buggy? This one's sort of a mixed answer, and again, the video is made off of the first official public release of Universal Control, so it may get more stable over time like anything else. But basically, in short, yes, it is stable. The first time I updated my computer, I set it beside my iPad and it started working immediately. And actually, fun fact, it starts working while the software is still being updated, like you can see here. But the one thing I noticed is that if your Mac has multiple users, even if they're on the same iCloud account, this can interfere with universal control. If you're just signed into one, it works. If you sign into another or switch users to the other profile, it breaks the connection. And even if I switch back to the original profile, it doesn't seem to work most of the time until I sign out of that other account. And I think this is something that Apple will work out, but at this point it does seem to be an issue. Other than that, it's been really stable. Now in terms of troubleshooting, if you have this set up and you're just finding that you're moving the mouse over to the side of the screen and it's never connecting, so you definitely do want to troubleshoot making sure you have the correct device and the right update. But the other thing I've noticed is when it's not reliably connecting, I open up display settings, I go down to universal control, and I check that first box off to turn it off and then I turn it back on. And then within a couple seconds, it's usually working. That is something that I did a lot over the last couple weeks of testing and almost every time it's worked. And if that didn't work, restarting both devices usually did. But to go a little deeper, I'm actually answering some of your questions on Universal Control. And as a reminder, follow me over on Vittertech on Twitter to submit your questions for upcoming videos as I make posts about it. So number one, if you're set up on one side and move it to the other side, does that work? Not automatically. It doesn't know where physically your computer or your iPad is, so if you move it to the other side, it's still automatically going to connect to that same orientation it had before. So if I was to switch my layout and move it to the other side, the way to change that is just like having a second display, going to your display settings and then dragging the device physically over to the other side. Number two, what happens when you arrange an iPad above your display? So it doesn't automatically attach to both corners if you have multiple computers in play here. It's only going to attach to the one, and also it removes the home swiping gesture from the iPad that you could normally do with a trackpad if it's at the bottom of your screen. So you'll need to use a trackpad gesture to go home or show the dock. All right, next one. How far away can you be from it? Does it have to be right beside it? So this can actually work anywhere in the room to get connected. It doesn't really matter where you are. As long as it's somewhere nearby, that's totally fine. Now, when does it disconnect? When you move into the other room, for example. So it does disconnect when you put the computer to sleep but then it connects again immediately and it won't connect unless you're nearby, like in the same room, for instance. But then once connected, I find I can actually travel anywhere in the house as long as I'm connected to the same Wi-Fi. And in testing, I actually made it all the way to the basement 
two floors down and it was still working. So I don't think it actually matters as long as you're on the same Wi-Fi. Now next, does it take into consideration family sharing accounts? No, it does have to be on the exact same iCloud account in order for this to work. Your Mac keyboard works with it, but does it pair your iPad keyboard to work with the Mac? And that answer is yes. So any keyboard trackpad or mouse will work and they each work seamlessly where I can use one and then just switch over to the other if I want to. I did notice that when you do switch, it resets the mouse to the middle of the screen, but then moving the mouse from the original display can still move it between screens. Next, does copy and paste work between devices? Yes, and it works just as simple as you would expect it to. Just copy on one, paste on the other. Next, does Touch ID keyboard work on other devices? So no, unfortunately, you're not able to use that Touch ID across your other devices. You have to use the one that's associated with that computer or iPad. So next, how many devices can be connected at once? So you must have a Mac involved. You can't just be two iPads. But aside from that, it doesn't really appear to have a limit. Here you can see me using three devices at once and it's totally fine. Next, can you connect an external display to this? The answer is yes. So as you can see, I've got all my three devices and an external monitor. And what's cool is you can actually move your iPad to the other side of the external monitor and continue seamlessly going through that. And that actually works surprisingly well. I didn't think that was gonna work so well. So what devices are compatible? Here you can see a list of everything that is compatible with universal control. I recommend screenshotting this for future reference. Next, how do you disconnect from universal control? So when connected, the display icon in the menu bar changes to the universal control icon. You can simply click on that icon and then click to disconnect from each device. Also putting the other device to sleep helps to shut it down as well. Next, how is universal control different than sidecar? So with universal control, there's two separate devices, still completely separate so I can access files on both of them individually, but I control them both with one mouse. With sidecar, the second device just turns into a second display of that first computer, meaning I can no longer access the files on that device because it's just an extension of this device. And next, can you use universal control and sidecar at the same time? So this one actually surprised me because when I was testing, I found out the answer is actually yes. And it's a little glitchy sometimes, but basically sidecar works like an app on your iPad, so it can be minimized. What ends up happening is sidecar is turned on and it becomes another display attached to your initial computer. So you've essentially got two additional screens here. The first is universal control and the second is sidecar. If I move to one side of the screen, it's an extension of my Mac, but if I move to the other, I can minimize sidecar and use the cursor to take control of my iPad. So will a lot of people use this? Probably not, honestly, but does it work? Yeah. Now, can the iPad initiate universal control? So that answer is no. In my testing, it appears to have to start from a Mac initially, and then you can add as many other Macs and iPads as you want. So that's basically all the answers to your questions. But if I missed anything, let me know down in the comments. And as always, remember to hit that like button because it tells YouTube that videos like this don't suck and hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this from me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.